I think it's safe to say that Bill Maher won't be joining us in the Poindexter Lounge anytime soon. Let's talk about that next. So last week, we lost a comic book and really pop culture legend in Stan Lee. Uh, People from both sides of uh, the comic book aisle, whether you're a DC fan or a Marvel fan or any of the many multitudes of, of companies in between, you understand Stan Lee's contribution to comic books, to pop culture, and um, to basically a part of our lives. Um, If you're here in the Poindexter Lounge, you understand this because the Poindexter Lounge is a place for nerds. It's a place for people who enjoy these type of things like comic books, movies, TV shows, games, toys, things like that. Um, And so, in understanding that, we understand what we lost in somebody like Stan Lee. That Stan Lee was not just somebody who created a couple of characters or wrote a couple of comic books. He was somebody who literally created uh, much of our childhoods. Uh, and, and not just a small segment, but even those who don't participate in, in nerd uh, culture are very aware of Stan Lee. They're very aware of who he was and some of the things that he did and some of his contributions to society. So today I want to talk about Bill Maher because Bill Maher last week, after Stan Lee's passing, came out and uh, had some very negative things to say about Stan Lee uh, and had some negative things to say about people like us who enjoy the things uh, that we enjoy, just simply for enjoying those things. And so uh, many of you, I'm sure, have already heard this story and uh, you're familiar with it, but just let's just recap. So Bill Maher wrote, a, um, wrote an article uh, called Adulting and uh, uh, just talked about the fact that, that we live in a world where it used to be you, you grew up and you you move past things of your childhood and you became a big boy. And so I I just wanna read you a quote, uh, just a little bit from this, uh, talking about Stan Lee here. He says, so the guy who created Spider-Man and the Hulk has died and America is in mourning, deep, deep mourning for a man who inspired millions to, I don't know, watch a movie, I guess. The assumption everyone had back when I was a kid, both with the adults and the kids, was that comics were for kids. And when you grew up, you moved on to big boy books without the pictures. So here's the thing, Bill Maher. Um, I'm not gonna call you a name. I'm not gonna say some negative thing about you. I'm just gonna simply tell you this. You're wrong. You're very wrong. Comics are more than just a kid's Thing. Comic books and comic book movies and pop culture um, have transcended that. Comic books are, are our modern day mythology. You know, that's what Superman was created about, was to be a modern day mythology, like the Greek gods or, or uh, uh, you know, like these stories of, of creatures and beings that, per, you know, possess supernatural powers and, and powers beyond that of mortal men. They were stories, they were, they were mythology, they were passed down from generation to generation. These stories inspire us as people, not just as kids, but I, I share with you, and I've shared it many times here on the Point Extra Lounge, about how growing up as a kid, I was I grew up without a, a, a dad. My dad wasn't around, and uh, I didn't reconcile with my dad until I was in my late 20s. But here's the thing. I looked at the character of Superman as being the ultimate male role model, as being the ultimate male example, because not because he had superpowers, not because he could fly or because he had heat vision or or did any of those things, but for this only. In that he loved the people that he was around. He took care of those that he loved. He was willing to sacrifice himself to, for them and to protect them and keep them safe. And he was always there for them. Anytime Lois Lane was on, did something that got her into trouble, 
All she had to do was call and Superman would be there because he loved her, because he cared about her. Jimmy Olsen, his pal Jimmy Olsen, he gave him a, a wristwatch with a communicator on it so that anytime Jimmy got into trouble, all he had to do was press that button and Superman would be there because Superman cared about those he was around. Also, that extended to the entire world as Superman would would be there and w was willing to sacrifice himself, taking on this role of, of a hero when he had the power to rule, he could rule at any time if he wanted to. He could, he could put the whole world under his submission at any time. But he had a good heart because he was raised by good parents in the Midwest and cared about people. And so those values were instilled in him at an early age and as he grew and, and in the books and, and you saw his story unfold, you saw that he cared about people in this way. And he was willing to sacrifice himself even through the death of Superman storyline, uh, you see that he was, he was willing to take the ultimate sacrifice to protect the world. And I think that's a great example for us. You know, no, we don't have superpowers. No, I don't have superpowers to go out and fight, you know, whatever kind of extraterrestrial being that may attack uh, if that were to ever happen. But what can we do in our communities? What can we do for those around us, our fellow man? You know, some of the best Superman stories were not about his great powers, but were simply about what he did just for people around him. You know, every once in a while, there'd be a Christmas story about how Superman would take presents to kids uh, or do things for kids or save a cat up a tree or something like that. Just these simple, what we would think may, maybe mundane, unsuperhero like things, but this was his character. And I think we can learn from those types of things. I think we can learn from those types of stories. I love the fact that, you know, Spider-Man uh, was, we, we call him your, your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man because Spider-Man cared about his neighborhood. He cared about his Aunt May. He cared about the, those that he worked with and, and associated with and, and tried to take care of the people in his community. Why can't we learn from that? Not just as kids, but as adults as well. Uh, that those things are important. Those things are, are vitally important to our society. Who cares if they're, if they're written in a Shakespearean uh, way, maybe in a, in a great novel, or if they're simply put on the panels of a comic book, you know, spanning just a few pages, or maybe in animation. Um, for Bill Maher to say that anything comic books or animation is just all for kids, it shows that he's out of touch. It's not just with, with the, the comic world or, or nerd culture, but he's just out of touch with reality. The different various mediums can have an impact on our lives. You know, it doesn't matter if they're illustrated or if they're written in proper English for and taught. Um, you know, he had a problem also with the fact that, uh, that these types of mediums with comics and animation have been taught in schools as, as, as being good. I don't understand, Bill, why you'd want to pick that fight. Um, why is that so important to you to degrade somebody else's love something that they that they're passionate about there's artists and writers who who put a lot into that you know i talk a lot about superman because that's that was my hero growing up and i remember i didn't really read comic books until i was about 16. i had a few comic books growing up but when i really started reading comics was when i was about 16 years old and it was based on the Death of Superman storyline because that was the first time I actually sat down and read a complete story from start to finish. And I remember picking up the graphic novel of the Death of Superman. And as I read this, I saw that this was very complex. It was complex. You know, Bill Maher tries to, to dismiss that and say, oh, people are trying to make this out like it's complex and it's not. Pick up a comic, Bill. Pick something up and actually read it before you leave a comment. Because I, I read that story and I could see that there were complex characters, there, there were situations that arose within that storyline that, that showed great character, that were inspiring. And when Superman died on the page, a part of me died, just a little bit. 
And I don't say that flippantly and I don't say that as a joke because I felt it. It was something that I felt deep inside that this character on this page illustrated in color came to life only to die right there. Stan Lee's organization released a statement regarding Bill. And I think it's very fitting. And I'm going to read that to you now. It says, Mr. Marr, comic books, like all literature, are storytelling devices. When written well by great creators such as Stan Lee, they make us feel, make us think, and teach us lessons that hopefully make us better human beings. One lesson Stan taught so many of us was tolerance and respect. And thanks to that message, we are grateful that we can say, well, you have a right to your opinion, that comics are childish and unsophisticated. Many said the same things about Dickens, Steinbeck, Melville, and even Shakespeare. But to say that Stan merely inspired people to watch a movie is in our opinion, frankly, disgusting. Countless people can attest to how Stan inspired them to read, taught them that the world is not made up of absolutes, that heroes can have flaws and even villains can show humanity within their souls. He gave us the X-Men, Black Panther, Spider-Man, and many other heroes and stories that offered hope to those who felt different and bullied while inspiring countless to be creative and dream of great things to come. I could think of no better way to put that into words than that right there. Bill, it's probably highly unlikely that you will ever see this, but if you do, I challenge you Get in touch with your inner child. <laughs> Find out what it is inside us that can bring us back to that point where we're just a little naive, we're just a little bit innocent once again. There's nothing wrong with that. As a believer in Christ, uh, I'm reminded that Jesus said a couple of things. One, he said, suffer the little children to come unto me. And then also, he said, to enter into the kingdom of heaven, you must be like a little child. You must recapture that innocence and what it is to love others unconditionally. I'm gonna keep reading comic books. I'm gonna keep watching cartoons because frankly, I'm a kid at heart. I hope you do the same. Let me know what you think of these uh, these articles and these uh, things that came out this week down in the comments section. I would love to have a conversation with you. You can also find us, of course, on our social media. All that is in the description below. We would love for you to be a part of this, this group of nerds here on the Poindexter Lounge because that's what we're all about. This is a place for nerds. This is a place for you. So if that's you, please consider hitting that subscribe button and hit that notifications bell so that you know when we put out new videos. Thank you so much for spending a little bit of your time with me today. And I hope that you as well have captured that inner child within you and that you live every day vicariously through the comic book characters that we grew up loving so much. Until next time, my name is Enash Fett and uh, Excelsior, true believers. Bye-bye.